Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Drummer's Education Connection. I am here with four amazing people. First of all, down in uh, in Tucson, Arizona, is Chip Ritter. Down in San Diego is Rick Stojak. Up in the Bay Area is Jeremy Steinkohler. In honor, in honor of our 51st episode and Jeremy's 51st birthday today, Woo-hoo! we have... <clears throat> One of the greatest drummers ever, the great Greg Bissonette. Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Bart, you bet. I'm one of the world's drummers, one of the longest names in drums. But who's <laughs> it? is it Chip's, Chip's birthday today? It's Jeremy's. No, Jeremy's, Jeremy's birthday. Jeremy, today. how old again? 51. Can we do a little song? Yeah. Yes. yes. It's Jeremy's birthday. go that's awesome you hey jeremy think about this you just got a birthday song of the beatles sang to you by a guy that plays with one of the beatles how cool is that i will i will cherish it always <laughs> so anyway people are doing it but it's me i'll take hey, it you know that I'm is your so awesome guy. I'm your booby yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we need to do this introduction, but I'm going to anyhow. Everybody knows Greg. Greg played in, he went to North Texas University, played in the one o'clock jazz band, he played with Maynard Ferguson. And Greg, you were on live in San Francisco with Maynard Ferguson? Thank you, Bart. Yes. Okay. So live, uh, then from there. David Lee Roth, you've played with Toto when Simon Phillips could not play because he had a back injury, right? Um, he played with ELO, he's played with Joe Satriani, and he's played with he, he's played with so many people, Carlos Santana. And and Greg it plays with a Beatle. He plays in the Ringo Star All-Stars band and so much more. And it is such an honor to have you on, Greg. Thank you so much. Oh, Bart, thank you. I've known you a long time. You're a great friend and a great drummer. Oh, thank you so much. So much. Wait a minute. Hey, you listen. Been a long time, and you're still coming on the show? I know. <laughs> Chris, Chris Brady made me do it. <laughs> oh, it's good. Chris is on the other side of the room. He's holding a gun to Greg's head right now. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> When Chris, when Chris was taking lessons, for those of, a, of you listeners, watchers, viewers, the don't. No, Chris Brady is a great drummer. He's Amazing. also lost relations at Aquarian Drum Ants. But yeah. he, when he was my student, I said, man, if you grew your hair out kind of long and got those Jeff Percaro glasses, you could look a lot like Jeff. You're a little taller. But, you know, it's about people skills. It's about getting out there. It's not just one Iana, two Iana anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. Hi, Chris. Chris is telling that story. And I love that picture that you gave him, that, that picture of you and Jeff. And I and I think he, you're holding, or he's holding his ba- his son, correct? Yeah, it was at the Mark Cranny uh, drum benefit in the back of Guitar Center on Sunset, and Jeff wasn't playing, but he just wanted to show up with his son and just hang. I said, "You should play." He goes, "No," with that low voice. "No, yo, yo, man, I just want to listen." Like <laughs> Vinny's playing, Bozio's playing, Steve Smith. I just want to hang and listen. Oh, man, that's great. Hey, I, I have a question, and I, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to lead with some of the Ringo stuff, if that's okay. i got to ask this question. I know Chip's going to say, that's a Bart question. So <laughs> I was watching uh, one of Don Fimulero's uh, videos a couple weeks ago, and he was interviewing uh, Ronnie Tut, right? And Ronnie Tut, one of the great drummers of the world, and played with Elvis Presley for many years. And then when Elvis passed away, uh, he tells a story how he just went out on the road again, started working at a van with a band. And then he got a call uh, to uh, do an audition for Neil Diamond. And he was right. talking about how nervous he was when he went in on this audition for Neil Diamond. And I'm thinking right. to myself, God, you play for Elvis. But you're nervous on going on an audition with Neil Diamond. That just shows such humility, I thought. Well, and so Neil, that's what I, well Neil, the Jewish Elvis. He's the nicest guy in the world, man. Neil. Yeah. I'll tell you a story about Neil. My buddy who plays keyboards, his dad used to play with Neil. And my buddy just showed up at the sound check just to hang out because his father passed away. And he's hanging there. And Neil looks at him and goes, wait a minute. Are you so-and-so's son? He says, yeah. He says, 
are you a keyboard player too? And he goes, yeah. He said, I bet you're great because your dad was great. And he sits in and plays a little bit. Neil added another keyboard position on his tour and gave him the gig oh, the whole tour. Man. Oh, that's wow. amazing. That's the kind of mensch Neil Diamond is. So Ronnie shouldn't have been nervous. And, well, and he kills it on that, killed it on that gig. So, oh, yeah. He did. Well, my question to you is this. This is my question. You played for, you played for David Lee Roth. You've done all this great stuff. When you got the, how did you get the gig with Ringo? And when you got the gig with Ringo, were you just like, oh, it's Ringo, you know, a Beatle? I mean, were you freaked out by that? What's it like working with the guy? How was that? That's 10 questions, Bart. You only get to go yeah. one. <laughs> I told you, Bart, question. <laughs> I am still to, no, that's a great question. I love it because I'm kind of a multitasker and I talk a lot. So you got to rein me in, but I, I'm still freaked out, even though he's a great friend of mine. And it's been, I've been playing double drums with him for 18 years now. Every time we play together, which we did a few weeks ago, he's got a new masterclass.com that I was able to help him host. And uh, I still get freaked out because it's it's Ringo. When I was seven years old, I saw the Beatles live. And uh, he's the reason, he and my dad, who was uh, another of my drum heroes, my dad played drums in Detroit. My mom played jazz vibes in his band. And besides my dad, you know, he's the other reason that I play the drums. And so I'm still freaked out. How I got the gig, <clears throat> you know, it's about, I tell young drummers, you know, we're all educators here. Half the pie is how you play. The other half the pie is how do you get, how do you do getting along with people? It's a people business, the music business. And it's not just how you play. It's, are you a complainer, somebody that puts people down or do you lift people up and look at the positive side? Like Louis Belson, a great friend of mine. He, the glass was always half full with Louis. So people skills are crucial. And, um, I had sent many different um, messages to Ringo's producer on, I think, four of his albums, Mark Hudson. And I kept saying, come out and see our Beatle band. My brother and I, we have a tribute band. We play at this club called Cafe Cordial in Sherman Oaks. We do Beatles. We don't dress up in the suits, but we, we try to play exactly like the record Ringo's. The reason I play in a band and still wanted to play in a band, still play in a band. Please come out and hear the band. And he, he's a busy guy. He's producing a million bands and he, he never made it out. But about midnight one night in 2003, I got a phone call. Greg, it's Mark Hudson. And I'm, I'm doing an, an album with Steven Tyler and we need drums on a song right now. And, uh, I said, great, I'll be there at 10 in the morning. I'm about 45 minutes away from where his studio is. He said, we need you now. It's midnight. And if you show up right now, if you order by midnight tonight, Ron Coe, Doc, and Fisher. <laughs> if you can get down here right now, you can use Ringo's drums. They're still set up. Wow. We'll be right wow. there. Rick. Wow. And, instead of doing the, and Bruce Sugar, Ringo's engineer, was the engineer with, with Mark. And he was engineering. And I think he kind of recommended me to Mark too and said, no, he's a good guy. He's a good drummer. And, and Mark said, I'm sorry, I never made it out to see your Beatle band. But I said, well, let's get some sounds. And as we all know, when you get sounds in the studio, usually it's this for 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> That's the I got the towels on all my drums right now, but the snare drum, let's go snare drum. I said, I'm not doing that, man. I'm going to play every Ringo beat I can think of. Have like a name that tune contest. That's right. So I played like a dozen Ringo grooves and Mark him in the drum room he says okay i knew you were a beetle nut and you were a ringo fan but you really really know ringo's grooves he says you know what if ringo's son zach who plays in the who mm -hmm. if he can't do this next promo tour with ringo and the roundheads not the all-star band ringo and the roundheads you got the gig Whoa. and i said wow what works oh like yeah that? Well, he take your word for it. He goes, he will. He says, because I know you've been going on around the world for 20, 30 years doing seminars about why Ringo is your favorite drummer and why he's the best song drummer ever and why his parts are so important. Mm -hmm. And so he said, does your brother, Matt, does he have a Hofner? 
And I said, does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> he had the he was like, he'll get the gig too. So anyway, about a week later, he said, Zach Starkey's out with the who. You got the gig. And tell your brother, he's got the gig too. And I met Ringo the first time. My dad, who was my drum cartage guy, for 18 years, my mom would read the Thomas Brothers. Okay, make a left on Vine. Make a right on Sunset. Go down to La Brea. And my dad would set the drums up. He, he came out. He goes, Greg, I just set, set your drums up five feet away from Ringo's line. Yeah. So when Ringo came <laughs> in, I said, Ringo, thank you so much. I'm so honored. He gives me a hug. He says, I hear you've been doing seminars about how I play for the last 30 years of telling drummers how great I am. You got to be in the band. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt went to give him a handshake. He says, I'm a hugger. I give hugs. Well, we did, you know, uh, Leno and Letterman and Conan and all those shows. And in 08, he let me be in the all-star band. And usually it was drummers with hit songs they sang, like, Levon Helm from the band, The Weight, or it was Sheila E., you know, or Simon Kirk actually sang Can't Get Enough of Your Love at All right now, even though Paul Rogers sang him. He's got a great voice, and he represented Free and Bad Company. But I'm not going to go out there singing a David Lee Roth song or singing <laughs> you know, you know, solo songs, you know. So I, he says, hey, I ran out of drummers with hit songs that I want in the band. You got the gig. Whoa. And that was in 08. So I've been Man. in the All-Star Band now for 13 years. Wow. wow, that is absolutely fantastic, man. That is fantastic. You know, hey, I, I'll go ahead, Rick. Well, Greg, speaking of Ringo, I wanted to ask you about the new video, The Drum Together. Um, the fundraiser is it, is it Why Hunger? Yes, that features your, your I saw it yesterday. Uh, my brother in law, Gene Hoagland, is on it. And yes, um, great on there. Tell Gene I'm a big fan and he sounds fantastic. Oh, man, that's going to make his day. Oh, he's killing. Oh, my gosh. Well, it, you guys have got to see it if you if you haven't seen it. And we're going to definitely post the video on, on, on Drummer's Education Connection. But um, can you tell us about the recording of it and, and tell everybody about it? Well, yeah. It, Dom Famularo spearheaded it. It's for Why Hunger. And so it's no wonder that Ringo said, yeah, I want to be a part of who, who doesn't want to be a part of why hunger. Right. So right, right. anyway, Ringo, I think just wanted to do it as a drum trio where instead of him playing the whole beat, I think he wants to keep that as it is on the Beatles white album. You know, he said, I'll go two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. And he said, why don't you and Jim do the other parts? So Jim on his iPhone recorded Keltner. one. Jim Keltner. Sorry. He went one, three, four, one, three. He actually played it correctly. Three, <laughs> three, four, four, four. I, I yeah, yeah. want to do the job, right? So there's a bit of a story here because I think there's something like 104 drummers that play on this whole thing. Yeah. But Ringo's thing, you know, he it's his beat. He starts this off. Well, Ringo, Jim, and I kind of started off with four rounds of the Come Together beat. So for the last 18 years, since 2003, when I became really close friends with Ringo, he's told me many, many, many times, because he leads left, right. that he started right. on the floor time and went up. Right. And all the years that I've studied and listened to come together and played it in bands, I hear, orally, I hear, duka, 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 the pitch is going down. Well, I went deep, deep, deep into isolated tracks and panning and tea towels and tunings. And so I wanted to honor Ringo. George Harrison had bought him the Hollywood kit, which is the Ludwig kit, Maple, that he used on the rooftop of Apple uh, for Get Back. And that, yep. movie, that movie's coming out. The real Get Back movie of Let It Be is coming out around Thanksgiving. And Ringo's Masterclass, probably around that same time, too. I'll tell you about that in a bit. But anyway, I added another Tom to my normally four-piece kit. And I said, I'm going to honor him, and I'm going to go up. But I really hear those pitches going down. So I'm going to tune my floor tom the highest, keep yeah. the middle, rack tom the middle, and tune my top tom the lowest. So I go, doo -goo, doo -goo, doo -goo, doo -goo, doo -goo, and the pitch kind of goes down, and the panning is kind of close to the come together 
version. So anyway, I started, I started with my left and went left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Because I think that's what Ringo would have done on a five-piece kit. He often does it on a four-piece. But anyway, it was a five-piece kit. So that's what I did on the Tom thing. I wanted to honor Ringo. There were no video cameras back then that were videoing him. You know, people didn't have their iPhone to go, let me check out Ringo and the studio playing come together. It's just what he remembers, right? And so we can listen, but he remembers doing that, and he's Ringo. So I wanted to honor him on that. Um, on masterclass.com, I got to kind of help with a lot of the questions and things and interview him for masterclass.com. And I'd be behind the camera, and he'd be talking, and then he'd be on the drums, and I'd be asking him questions. And then Ringo and Jim Keltner and I played drum trio stuff and broke down a lot of beats, and I played trumpet on – Topsy, his favorite drum song, Cozy Call. But we had a blast. And then we had an all-star group of musicians, Joe Walsh, Steve Lukather, Jim Cox, Nathan East, and uh, Jim Keltner, and Ringo and I. So we did a jam at the end. It's going to be a great master class. If any of you have ever checked out masterclass.com, they're going to have Ringo up there in a few months. So it's really, really great. A lot of insightful stuff on him. But I just had a four-piece kit, and I went, we did the same trio. Boom, boom. I just did it going down on a four-piece kit. But anyway, thank you for watching that. Yeah, why hunger drum together, come together. And I'm yeah. just so so blown away that Ringo, you know, starts it off. It's so cool. It's so hip. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the first one to actually, Randy Waldman, one of my favorite musicians and dear friends, he did an arrangement of Come Together that's yeah. sort of like his albums, the Vinny plays on, where he takes TV show themes or movie themes and just, it's like Zappa meets Chick Corea. It's Randy Waldman. Well, he Randy Waldmanized this, and they sent me uh, the basic track to play along with with a click, and they sent me kind of a not so correct. It wasn't Chris Brady style. It was kind of just like a, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a spit out of like how a computer would write figures, and it wasn't right because nobody. As much as I like love a lot of the people that do drum books and drum notation, Chris and I, we do it old school. Drum, kick drum is stems down. I don't want to read a thing where kick drums are stems up. That's like, wait a minute. That's computer. That's the shortcut to writing stuff out, stems up. Chris does it stems down. Yeah. Like the way I taught him when he was 16 years old. <laughs> kick drum is stems down. If you're writing a sex tuplet, pick it, pick it, pick it, you can beam it all together. But for the most part... Guys, put your kick drum st stems down and your snare drum stems up. Write the tom stems up with circles around them on different staves, different staff, different notes of the staff. But make it like the old books always were when we learned to play. So anyway, I kind of took the computer stuff they had written and I just sharpened the heck out of it. And so I put them all on these big pieces of foam board. So there's my writing. There's chart. There's there it is. Charts, okay? There it is. There it is. So I took their computer chart and a lot of incorrect rhythms and stuff, and I wrote in what the rhythms should be, and then I highlighted things that were really important. And it's a six-page deal, right? So this is what oh, I, yeah. I was looking at. Anyway, it's much more like the way Chris and Brady and I would write charts. And so I, I was the first guy to play the first take, and Russ Miller was going to be responsible for mixing it and dakota uh dom famularo's nephew was going to edit the videos together i just said russ you got a lot of work to do here when all 104 drummers are going to be on this yeah you want me to dom wants me to play it pass by myself why don't you show up since you're going to be editing everything and you can help produce my track with me he goes okay mm -hmm. i played the first take and then russ took it home he played the second take take and then i know it was sent out to steve gadd and to Dave Weckl and to Vinnie Kaliuta. So as yep. far as I know, that's the core of who played the song. Um, and then everybody else got to do what they wanted to do or do little drum solo things. There's eight bar sections in the middle over that. But it's quite uh, an, an extravaganza over Come Together. So it's really awesome. Bottom line is hope it helps with world hunger. That's, That's right. Great. That's, That's great. right. Hey, Greg, one of our friends, Jacob Sosa, says, I have to say this. 
Greg, I looked up to you a lot when I was in college and you were an example to me to be a versatile drummer. I preach that to my students about having a good worldview of drums and having a good attitude. So thank you for being you. That's from Jacob Sosa. Man, Jacob, thank you so much. What an honor. When I was a kid, I would pray, Lord, help me be a drummer that people know and I can go around the world and play drums. Talk about your prayers being answered. Like I prayed about the Maynard gig and the David Lee Roth gig and the Ringo gig. I never dreamed he'd ask me to be on the all-star band. I don't have hits and stuff that I sang, but it's just the, the most fun ever to be there helping out with when he goes up front and then we do double drums. But Jacob, thank you. I'm glad I could make a difference. And I'm a huge fan of your uncle, man. What a ball player, Sammy. public. Yeah. <laughs> has he ever done steroids? <laughs> Drumming steroids. Oh, oh, yeah. Jan Bass, and Jan Bass says, I love everything about you, Greg. Jan, J A N Bass. Jan. Now I know I know Jan Uvina, who's a drummer, right? Is Jan a woman? No, Jan's a guy. Jan's a guy. A lot of Jans I know are drummers. Jan Michael Vincent. Remember that actor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. Age. I'm 62. I'm too young for Medicare, too old for women to care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's have you, ever seen, have you ever seen Mary Poppins? Do you yes. have water? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Ed Wynn on Mary Poppins and Dick Van Dyke are talking, and someone tells a joke, and it's not any good. And Ed Wynn says, ah, there's nothing like a good joke. And that's nothing like a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Chris Brady, Chris Brady said Airwolf. 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 That's what he said, yeah. How do you spell that? A-I-R-W-O-L-F. Sounds Airwolf. like code. I'm going to get him in the line right now because I don't know what that means. And that's kind of, that's kind of, <laughs> that's an inside thing. If I ever heard an inside thing, Airwolf. Yeah, Airwolf. call him up. Call him up. Let's yeah. put him on the spot and say, what let's the heck is Airwolf? Put him on the spot. Call him right call. Now. Yeah. now, let's see if he picks up, though. Let's see if he picks you know, up. He only picks up. He only picks up for, like, important people, so I might not get a pickup here. He just explained. <laughs> he said Jan Michael Vincent. And I'm a pretty easy pickup. See me with <laughs> Jan point. Michael Vincent, Airwolf. Oh, is he on? He's on. Boys. What the heck is Airwolf? Hey, what is Airwolf? <laughs> What's up, Chris? Oh, Jan Michael Vincent Airwolf. Oh. Chris Brady is a step ahead. Oh. Yes, he's, well, he's going to be on. Hey, guess what? Chris is on. We're interviewing him on the 26th. You're on so the 26th, CB. Remember, remember Ernie, Ernie Borgnine and Jan Michael Vincent? They that <laughs> he says Ernie Borgnine and Jan Michael Vincent. Only Chris would have a short you know, name for Ernest Borgnine. Ernest Borgnine. Ernie. Ernie. My Ernie. buddy Ernie. I love it. Ernie Borgnine. <laughs> it's kind of like Vincent Caliuta. <laughs> Ernie, Vinny, how you Vinny. doing? Can you can you stay on the line with us? No, uh, Vinny, I just call him Vin. Oh, uh, Chris just oh, calls Vin. him Vin. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Vin. Like yeah. Vin Scully and Sammy Sosa. So yeah. stay on the line with us, Chris. He can, he can, he can correct us. Tell him to ask him if he has any important to work uh, to do over at Aquarian today. Do you have anything important to do to carry on the Roy Burns legacy, or are you just sitting here watching drummer podcasts all day? I'm just watching my favorite drum teacher and four of my favorite artists. He's oh, yeah, yeah, brother. Oh, he, they can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's fantastic. The show, so it went from the Greg Bissonette show to the Chris Brady show, and he's going to be on it. in two weeks, man. I'm I can't wait. You guys can talk about Stems Down. Yeah, we will. Right. We're going to talk. Right. And because Chris has gone over a couple of my charts for me, and he always says that. He's like, Stems Down, Stems Down. Stems Down, down yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, man. That's it. That's it. Hey, so I got a question. Oh, is he still talking? Is Chris talking? Well, you can stay on with us in case I have any questions. Are you cool with, or am I occupying space on your iPhone? Yeah, I, can, I can stay on. I can be your, your, your phone of friend. He'll be my phone of friend. Okay. It went from a drummer podcast to uh, the, what's that taxi show? Like the million dollar taxi show. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I love yeah. that show. <clears throat> yeah, Cash Cab, Cash Cab. This is Cash, cash Drummer. 
Okay. Listen, Cash. Cash your drummer Cash. Is the silent partner that might chime in once in a while on Cash Cab here. Drum Cab. Okay, yeah. Bart, what Drum you got? So, I, I think I think Jeremy has a question. Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. To, oh, Jeremy. Uh, you know, I was just going to get go deep down the rabbit hole of stems up and stems down, but probably our viewers don't really want to hear about that. But I, I my <laughs> my question is for Chris. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> can you send me a 15 inch drum head <laughs> there you go you're getting, you're getting pimped out on the drum heads now chris so stems down i always i when when the bass when the foot pattern is doing an ostinato pattern a regular repeating pattern i always do stems down but if it's if it's involved in a, like a linear pattern with the hands i connect it to the top what do you feel well about even that? if it's a drum beat uh no no not if it's a regular groove if it's a groove, I want stems down. If it's connected like a that could yeah. be up yeah, stems yeah. Up. or like a linear, you know, a Garibaldi thing or where, where he does like in, inserting the kick into a, a hand. Uh, see, that's where we're different. But hey, different strokes for different strokes. I saw Garibaldi David Garibaldi for those of you. I saw him Saturday night at the Denton, Texas Jazz Festival. I was doing an event on Sunday for breast cancer of uh, a drumathon. That's Denver. my friend April Samuels. April, yeah. is, April is so great. And uh, so the night before I got in and heard David, uh, and if I hear a linear pattern like soul vaccination, I still want stems down. But you know what, Jeremy, we're allowed to disagree. <laughs> no, that, that's where we're wrong. You're wrong, man. We just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> it's most of life lately. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I say it with my wife. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's we, my, my wife and I, we say disagree to disagree. Disagree to disagree, <laughs> yeah, Chris. There you go. <laughs> you know, this This is exactly this drummer's head. That's that. what drummer's education oh, connection is all about. It's just yeah. a bunch of guys and girls who are drummers just talking drums, just hanging out. And that's that's yeah. what how this was created. That's I exactly think Rick right. just lots of ways to hold your sticks and play with your heel up, heel down. There's lots, but the, but the big thing is you got to start playing with musicians. So I get to go around the world yeah. for Dixon and for Sabian and Remo. Sorry, Chris, Remo, Vic yeah. Firth, you know, um, DW double pedals, direct sound headphones. I go around the world and do these seminars telling people about my drums and about playing. And so many of them have never played. With a bass player, they've never sat in a room and played with a bass player and a guitar player, let alone a big band or whatever. So you got to play with musicians. It's not just about posting some cool thing on YouTube and thinking that you're a great band drummer. You have to follow YouTube. Play in a band where the bass player's girlfriend just broke up with him and he's playing boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> 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 and just got a triple mocha choca latte yaya, and they're rushing. You got to be able to keep the tempo straight, play with other musicians. And the other big thing is once you've played with other musicians and your time is real solid and you can play like my drum channel, I, I have my own school on drum channel. There you go. Greg at drum school. We talk about vocabulary and how it's important to know different beats and fills and different styles. Once you've got a handle on that stuff, relate and, and address the second half of that pie, which is, do you like people? Do you like hanging out with people? Can you make people laugh? Can you make people feel good? Can you compliment them? If you ever have to address something weird like the time or like a figure, do it in, in private. Say, hey, Johnny Bag of Donuts, come here for a second. You know, why are you rushing like a madman? You know, don't do it in front of other people. You know, then you're going to have a confrontation. Don't talk about politics on the road. Don't get into weird, you know, confrontational discussions about musical parts. Talk separately about things in the band. You know, lots of times the drummer is kind of the musical director by default because you're the one that's counting off the tunes. You're the one that's really in control of the dynamics. But try to be someone people want to hang out with. There's lots of great drummers that have lost gigs because their people skills are non-existent. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's drummer, so true. Right? Yeah, all kinds of musicians. I, I think to, a, I had I think, a rehearsal with a bass player and there were some time issues. He after after that we play the tune, he took the clock off the wall and walked around and held it in everybody's face. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Hey, Greg, what time is it?" Time yeah, right. Hey, Greg, one of your students, Dan Lynch from California, says, "Please say say hi to Greg for me." Oh, uh, hey, man, thanks for watching, man. That's fantastic. Hey, hey, I, got a, I got a serious question for you. You said something earlier about uh, praying for your Maynard gig and for another thing. I can't remember what you said. Everything. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Mike Clark, who was on here a few weeks ago, I don't know if you know Mike, he, he was talking well. about, uh, also sort of visualizing, you know, what he's after, you know, and he talked about that on the Herbie gig and, and when he was recording actual proof. Is that something you do? You use visualization and, and sort of putting it out into the universe kind of thing, praying? Nah, I'm not a visualization crystal, put it out in the universe guy. I pray to my creator. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. I go, hey, God, thanks for letting me be a drummer and be born into a family where my dad's a drummer and my mom plays vibes and my brother's my favorite bass player and my sister's a musician. And thanks for giving me these talents and letting my parents take me to lessons and letting me play drums and have band rehearsals. Please help me go to the next level. I love Maynard Ferguson. I'm a hack trumpet player, and I, Maynard's my hero. I really, if it's your will, God, and I'm going to use the G word, God, and I'm going to even use the J word, Jesus. I say, if it's your will, it's my will, and I'd sure love to do this. And we have free will, and you're allowed to do anything you want. You can rub two stones together and throw them in the pond, or you can visualize, or you can go to, you know, Roswell, New Mexico, and look for aliens. You can do whatever you want to do. We have free will, but that's the way I do it. I pray to my creator, and I ask constantly for help about raising my kids, about driving in L.A. traffic when everybody's high on edibles and staring at their iPhone. I pray about everything in my life. So I pray about Maynard's gig, Ringo's gig, David Lee Roth's gig, the ELO gig, about doing clinics, about getting back to work in a pandemic. I do. All, I pray about everything. So I respect Mike Clark and his visualization. And I respect people that are into whatever they're into. People are equal in my eyes. We are all, in my eyes, God's creation. Someone that's homeless, that doesn't have two pennies to rub together, or someone that lives in a mansion, or someone that's never played a gig, or someone that has the greatest gig ever. Man, if you're ever going to meet your heroes, don't geek out and go, oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. They're going to walk away. If you just go, hey, Neil Peart, Ringo Starr, David Lee Roth, Maynard Ferguson, Carlos Santana, these are human beings. Yeah. We're all people. And everybody is equal. There's no one person that's better than the other person. We're all God's creation in my estimation, in my view, my belief. We're all God's people. And so there's no room for egos. There's no room for putting anybody down. And anybody can do whatever they want to do to have that get out of bed and make things happen. So, you know, I guess in a way I visualized because I, I played with every Maynard Ferguson album that was ever put out. And I kind of dreamed and wished and hoped that I could be playing. And I used to pretend that Buddy Rich broke his arm and I was being asked to play on Big Straight Face. Or I play with Beatles songs and, you know, I never knew Ringo would have an all-star band. But I remember praying, oh God, I just got the gig with Maynard. And I just had the best year of my life playing with Maynard. But I don't want to be labeled a jazz big band guy. I'm in L.A. I want to be – my favorite kind of music is the Beatles. And uh, I'd love to do some playing, you know, in a beatle kind of way. Well, what happens? You know, I get to play drums with Ringo. And one day Paul McCartney comes in for Ringo's 70th. And he plays birthday with us. You know, and Ringo was oh, so man. surprised. You know. Oh, man. I mean, I'd really love to do a rock gig. And I remember listening – you know, Jesus says, knock, you know, and, and ask, and it, uh, you know, you're, you're supposed to have a communication. I think for me, I'm supposed to have a communication with my creator. And I said, I'd love to get a gig. And I was pretty visualizing or whatever you want to call it. I was pretty adamant. I said, I'd love to get a gig with Journey or Van Halen or Genesis. Well, Phil Collins is the drummer in Genesis, right? With Chester Thompson. Steve Smith was the drummer in Journey. Whip out your driver's license. Alex Van Halen. He's the drummer in Van Halen, you know. So what happens? David Lee Roth leaves Van Halen. And I, my buddy, Myron Grombacher from Pat Benatar's band. Pat Benatar. Yeah, he's one of the best yeah. friends. He says, man, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I've already gotten to do one of my dreams playing with Maynard Ferguson. I'd love to get a rock gig. He said, we're going to get you a rock gig, just like that. He's from Youngstown, Ohio. He should be on your show. And I'm from Detroit. We're Midwesterners, kind of no BS, just – we're going to get you a rocket. He recommends me to audition for Vinnie Vincent's band. Vinnie Vincent was the guitar player after Ace Freely and Kiss. I don't get the gig with Vinnie Vincent, but he says, you'd be good for Dave Roth's band. And I said, who's Dave Roth? He said, David Lee Roth. I said, David Lee Roth's in Van Halen. He says, 
Not anymore. He just quit Van Halen. He's got his own band he's starting. He got Billy Sheehan to play bass. They just got Steve Vai to play guitar. I'm going to have you call Steve Vai and get an audition. And because of that, I get the gig with Dave. And then the same thing I could, I've already told you about my praying for, you know, you can't just go, you know, help me God to do this tomorrow. And you, you, you got, I feel like he gave me the talent, but I had to work on the talent. I still have to work on the talent. I teach a lot of drum lessons. I take a lot of drum lessons. Dave Village, Jimmy Branley. I've had so many drummers come over and just jam. I want to learn. I watch all these great educational things on drum channel. And I really try to learn, but I'm working on it. And, uh, you know, be the best drummer you can be, be the best person you can be. And, uh, you know, if it's if it's God's will for me, then I, I feel like wow, what a blessing. So anyway, that's my shtick. Hey, hey Greg, yeah. Neil of Fortune, Neil of Good Fortune shtick. asked Greg, can you talk about your time and study with Tony Williams? For, yeah, a little bit about that. So I was How did that come about. With, yeah, so I was room, roommates with Mark Cranny, one of my drum heroes and best friends, and I even have his high school drum head, Mark Cranny, right? Right on. So anyway. Mark and I are roommates, and I didn't know that he was really great friends back in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, like in high school probably, with Tony Williams' wife, Colleen. So anyway, I'm up in San Francisco recording. My brother and I were recording a Joe Satriani album, and I got BAM magazine, Bay Area magazine. And I'm just thumbing through it. You know, it's like guitar overdubs or something. And I'm, a little dinky ad in the back page says, Tony Williams accepting private drum students. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me, man. Tony Williams. And there's a number there. And it's his number. So I call him. <laughs> and I leave him a message. Hey, Tony, this is Greg Bisson. I'm a drummer in L.A. You are one of my all-time drum heroes. You pioneered fusion music. I've worn out my Miles copies of Four and More, Miles in the Sky. I went all around the world trying to find your kind of symbols and hitting symbols. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I would love to take lessons with you if possible. Please call me. So I get home the next day and we had these phone machines and it's going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your messages are full. And I played through my messages on the last message. Yo, Greg, it's Tony Williams. <laughs> what? He says, I'm all filled up with, with lessons at the store where I'm teaching. But uh, my wife knows your roommate and great pal, Mark Cranny. And she said, you're a good guy. So come on up. I'll teach you at my house. I call him up and he goes, Hey man, come on up. I said, he said, I got to tell you one thing though. He says, I charge a hundred bucks an hour. I said, my accountant's $350 an hour. I want to hang with you. I'll take the <laughs> <laughs> Every couple of weeks I would fly LAX, well, Burbank airport to, to Oakland, back to Oakland. And I would rent a car and go to Tony's house and play uh, drums with him. And he let me record all the lessons on dat tapes. And he always told me, those are for you. You paid for them. You know, they're not for you to, there was no such thing as posting or sharing them. But anyway, I have those lessons and I learned so much from him. And we yeah, were, what, did, we were, what did you study? Like, what, what was the approach? Well, he had his new DW yellow kit with red hardware, double bass, and, um, uh, one time I took a kid because Joe Satriani and his producer said, bring a bunch of different kids. So um, my drum tech, Jay Rubin, rented a U-Haul and drove up like, I don't know, five or six kits. We had a Bonham kit. We had a Bebop kit. We had kind of a funk kit. We had all kinds of different kits. And I had this little 18-inch kick, 12-inch rack, 14-inch floor tom kit. And I put it in the rental car and I drove it to Tony's house. And I said, Tony, I've got a got a little bebop kit in the car is there any way i could go out and grab it and set it up and we could play double drums and he said oh man let's just use my kit you know and i pushed it i tried one more time i said man it would mean the world to me if i could get that kit and we could double drums he goes go get it so i get it and i set it up and we played double drums for about a half an hour wow. and afterwards he said the nicest thing he says you know man i haven't played double drums with anybody since the early 60s with Max. That's, oh my he God. said, and that was fun. Well, I was asking him about his symbol that he used on four and more. And he goes, you want to see that symbol? I said, you have that symbol still? And he goes, come out in the garage. And he shows me, and it was a spring, man. He hit that thing so much. He said, Max gave me this 
when I got the Miles gig, and he said, if you're going to hit this, man, hit it. And he said, I did it. It's, it was just worn out. But um, he was asking me some things about double bass because he had done Zildjian Day in Scotland and Vinnie Pagliuta was playing and he noticed Vinnie had a double pedal and it was some really cool stuff. So he asked me about double pedal and I said, well, he's, what do you do with the double bass? And I said, well, I do. He checked this out, man. You can put your heel on the hi-hat and your left toe on the left pedal and you could do triplets. where I ripped that from. We all ripped stuff from everybody. Two weeks later, I went and knocked on the door. Colleen said, oh, Tony's out in the in the guest house playing. I opened the door. <laughs> playing that lick on warp speed, man. <laughs> like, I said, Tony, how'd you get that down so fast? And he said, I practice a lot. And he also... Kind of to allude to, to Mike Clark's statement, he also was kind of one of those visualizers. He said, I willed my feet to do it. Oh. Well, that doesn't work for me. I can't yeah. will my feet yeah. to do something. Yeah. And everybody to each their own, right? He's Tony Williams. He's Mike Clark. Hey, man, whatever works for you. I'm going to say I'm going to will my feet to play Thomas Hawk on my sugar bleed. Okay, I've been working on that. Now I'm going to work it. Will my hands to go. I can will it all I want. It's not going to work. Can you hold, can you hold one second? Is that, Bis is that Brady? Chris Brady's still on. Hello? Oh, my gosh. Guys, hold on one second. I'm oh, my God. Me. I'll be right back. Ringo, how are you, man? Hold on just a second. We're on live with Greg Bissonnet and Ringo Starr from the freaking Beatles call. Oh, my God. I just, that, that cool? was that was Ringo. Wow, it's Ringo. Just so you guys know, I willed that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, dude, think about this for just a second. We're in the middle of a podcast, and Bissonnet says, you got to hold on because Ringo's, Ringo Starr's on the freaking phone. Uh, get, get put, put, put Ringo on the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he played birthday for you, Jeremy. This has got to be the, this has got to be is. the greatest birthday present ever. That Pretty was amazing. Epic event. Wow. Oh, amazing. Ringo just called. That's okay. That's oh my God. Bitching. Now talk about like, a le that's cool. Now, hold on. What did, what did Greg said? Don't be freaked out and don't, don't, uh, don't go crazy. That was, that was cool. That was very hip. Well, Don't inside, freak out. You can go crazy. Make so hi, Mr. Star. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. That would probably be one of those moments. Okay. 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 I'll throw it to you first, Jeremy. Let's ask this while Greg's on the phone with Ringo yeah. Starr. What would, what would you do if you, what would you say to Ringo Starr if you got to meet him? What would you say? What would you ask? Elevator pitch. Uh, uh, man, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the music. It's made yeah. all the world a difference to me in my life, and and it's been a tremendous inspiration. So, thank you for for being you and doing what you've done, and, and bringing that music, putting that music out into the world. Cool, Rick. Say. What would you say? Also, can I have your autograph? Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> selfie, selfie, I, selfie. I I definitely would just just have to thank him, just yeah. and and let him know that 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 his music is going to live forever and that he's influenced so many people. And, and that I think he's one of the most brilliant drummers in the world. Um, and all you have to do is try, you might listen to a Beatles song and say, Oh, the drumming is simple. Well, go and just try to play a Beatles song Thank and you'll you. just see how complex it is and how clever it is. Yeah. And, right. and for my money, he's one of the ultimate drummers or one of the greatest drummers that ever lived. Oh, completely. Chip, yep. you, what would you say? I'd, I'd probably say that uh, thank you for inspiring so many drummers to pick up sticks. Yeah, There are so many people that have stories about seeing the Beatles and saying, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do with my life. And, uh, you know, thanks for inspiring music for the music that inspired music. Yeah, completely. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, you know, what, what would you do with something like that? You know, what, yeah. what, what about you, Bart? 
I same thing. You know, yeah. mine would sound more like hi, oh, Ringo. <laughs> 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 oh, he's back. All right, yeah. that. So but, guess why Ringo was calling me? He was calling okay. Now hold on. Together. This is this this is what we were doing. We were just talking about like what what when you went off, we we're like, holy crap, Ringo Starr just called him. You know, I mean, that's a pretty big thing. And so we all just did the question of what what would you do if you got to meet Ringo Starr, and we all gave our answer. And I was just giving mine, and these guys were all calm and cool. And my answer was, uh, I would probably say the same thing. I would just thank him for the music, but it would probably sound something like. Hello, Mr. Star. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> but that goes along with what you were saying, Greg. And I got I to gotta jump on this because one of the things that and, – and everybody that's watching that has met you knows this, but I got I to reiterate it. I remember coming to your house, sitting in that room right there, taking – I think I took three lessons from you. And I learned more in those three lessons about what I could not do, what I had to go home and practice. And I do remember the first one. I remember sitting down and kind of having that moment. Where I was like, Is your, I mean, I love your playing. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm playing across from Greg Bissonette. But then, like, two minutes into the lesson, you were just one of the guys, and you were teaching me, and we were playing. And I learned we're so all much. one of the guys. Right. And I, and, on this planet. Right. And that's what I learned so much from you. And let's I want to I want to tie this together because we talked about that with Ringo and Chris Brady. We had him on the phone and having a laugh there and stuff. But one of the things I since this is a drummer's education thing, we talk about everything on here, endorsements, everything. One of the things, one of the reasons that I have an endorsement deal with Gretsch Drums is because of you, because something you told me. Right. You were very helpful and instrumental in helping me get my endorsements. And we just had Chris Brady on, who's an A&R guy for Aquarium and our dear friend, what would you just say to anybody out there that's seeking endorsements, that's, that's trying to get an endorsement? What would, what would be the piece of advice you would give them? That it's a whole different ball game in 2021. Yes, sir. It was it is. 1982 when I was yeah. trying to get endorsements and that a lot has changed. And then unfortunately playing video games is way higher on the list than playing drums. And drum sales and cymbal sales and stick sales and head sales are in the tank. And that's just the truth. Yep. And people, we need a new Beatles on the scene, man. We need like Nandy Bushell and, um, you know, we need, we need something, man, because the, the reason people can't get endorsements now is because drums aren't selling, cymbals aren't selling. Maybe electronic drums are selling a little bit, but it's not a great time. And a lot of things like these wonderful phones that I have here, and, and a lot of things have taken our, our time away. And um, you can maybe, if you've got a, a, gil, a gazillion hits uh, on your social media, or maybe if you're, you know, playing with the next Foo Fighters or something, you know, but I've recommended so many friends of mine in the last five years to companies for endorsements and they're just they're letting people go they're not yeah. bringing people on don't you want to know why Rico called wait, me wait, we yeah to, we do wait wait wait, 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 wait. I, he called you to see how he could get on our show he did he wants to come on and say, i don't have any space for you <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can fit him in next month sometime <laughs> he said it's too late so he's not doing it yeah <laughs> What did Ringo say? What did he say? Yeah, what, what, what did Ringo want? Chip, finally, Chip asks me. He <laughs> was calling me to congratulate me on doing a great job on the Come Together. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you he go. said, I really yeah. loved the way we started it out. And um, he said he loved all the drummers. And he said, what a great cause. So anyway, that's why. Right, that's awesome. Well, Greg, we'll put it out there right now. If Ringo ever wants to come on, if you want to come on with Ringo, <laughs> we would love to talk all about that endeavor. Can I tell you something real quick, Rick? Yeah. When I got the gig in Ringo and the All-Star, in uh, Ringo and the Roundheads in 03 with my brother, <clears throat> Ringo's manager said, if you want to last a long time in Ringo's band, Never ask him to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not I an interview. It. And there were no podcasts. Then. Yeah. No, yeah. Not, yeah. No, knock on his door and say, could you meet my long lost pal from the seventh grade? <laughs> and I've never gone down that road. Yeah. I've been his great friend. And since 03, 
And in the L7 events until late, because I just don't go there. He's a beetle, man. He's Ringo. Yeah, I get it, man. I get man. it. But yeah. Anyway, sorry, Rick. <laughs> well, well, his world hunger endeavor is is huge and make and it's making such a difference, you know. And and a man like that is is just giving so much to the world. So God knows his time is precious, but but well, he gives you know, so much. Greg, what, what, what you said when when you went off the, the screen for a minute was we were talking. What would we say to Ringo if we got to meet him? And every one of us was just like, "Thank you." That was the core of it. Like, yeah, thank you yeah. for the music and thank you for the inspiration and, you know, how you're, how what you put out into the world has affected us and inspired us and changed our lives. So we are, we're eternally grateful for, to the man. And and if you ever meet him, that yeah. is the best thing to say. That's what I say all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He gets it, man. He really gets it. You know, he came from very humble beginnings and, uh, you know, he was a child that spent a lot of time in the hospital and, um, uh, Wait till you guys see his master class. It's he talks about things that you've never heard him talk about with the drum. Greg, cool. how how do we find that master class again? Please let us know. How do we find that? Well, it's not something you find right yet because it's not edited and not out yet. But there's a company, it's kind of real high end, like Samuel Jackson, Carlos Santana, um, Alicia Keys, Herbie Hancock, right. um, Hans Zimmer, like chefs and acting coaches and people that are like really the best golfers, the best of their game. And so it's, it's, it's not cheap, but you sign on to masterclass.com. Okay. And you buy a year, I don't know if it's 120 bucks or 180 bucks and you get these masterclasses from people you want to watch. Right on. This will probably be out. I don't know, November. I don't know for sure when. Matt, do you have? I know you're very involved with the drum channel. And you want to talk about that? Do you have any? Do you have classes on there as well, Greg? Is that absolutely master? for the last okay. ten years? I've been filming classes with my dear friend Don Lombardi, and yep. yeah, it's up and running. It's called the Greg Bissonette Drum School on the Drum Channel. That's uh, are, you, are you accepting website, students from your official website? You can find that on Drum Channel. You can go to my website, myname.com. You can go to Drum Channel. Or you can just type in. Yeah, but what you can do, uh, if you're out there watching and you would like to take private lessons with me, either in person or on FaceTime or Zoom or Skype or Google Meet or whatever you got, um, go send send an email to the guy that organizes it all for me. His name is Frank. He's, a, he's the engineer that also uh, I do all my tracks with. People around the world send him files and we do tracks. Right on. So just email this guy. His name is Frank. Frank Rosato, R O S A T O. And the email address is Greg, G R E G G, drums, D R U M S, the number two at gmail.com. Greg with two G's, drums, Greg drums two at gmail.com. And then he'll get back to you and he'll schedule the lessons. And Greg, nice. where are you located? I live in Southern California in LA. And you are doing in-person lessons at uh, yeah. at your studio, at your house, or I have or... a dream room where I do I do drum lessons. Yeah, so okay, dream great. lessons in person, or if you're in Tuna Fish, Wyoming, or Shanghai, <laughs> China, you know, <laughs> Tuna Fish, Fish, Wyoming. Tuna That's Fish, awesome. Wow. My favorite. Place. Greg Bissonnet. Greg Bissonnet. Do you? Is it true? Do you still have a Chip Ritter snow globe? <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I have some snow globes, but most of them are like Christmas scenes and or okay. like kids meeting Santa Claus and the snow's coming down. If but Dan said he gave you one. Then I would never throw away a snow globe. I know. All right, good, good. Can you still have it? <laughs> never throw away, never ask Ringo to do anything and never throw away a snow globe. Those are the two rules. <laughs> so those are the two rules for getting through life, right? Yes. Greg, what's coming up next in your future? What's your next, the next I'm thing that you go, like us to focus on? I'm going to go to Crunch Fitness where there's seven lanes and I'm going to swim for an hour in an 85 degree saltwater pool as soon as I'm wow. done. Nice. Wow. So, then I'm going to get on the life cycle bike. And I'm going to watch, hopefully, the Red Sox beat the Yankees. And hopefully tomorrow I'm yeah. going to watch the Dodgers beat the Cardinals in a one-game wild card. It should be, if we're going to have wild card games, it should be series, like three games. One game is just anybody can win or lose a ball game. Agree. Yeah, right, right. I'm totally a huge Dodgers fan. I have to say I'd be a lot better drummer 
if for the last six and a half years I would have been practicing more, I have not missed one Dodger game, either on my MLB.com app or on Spectrum Sports Channel 68 on my life cycle bike or going to the games, thanks to my great friend Jerry Turner, who is with the Dodgers but is a great drummer too. If I, I have not missed one game in six and a half years. No kidding. And they're like two and a half to three hours long. Man. That's I uh, wow. sugar a lot my sugar a lot better now. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> Afro Cuban lessons. Yeah, but That's I a... love baseball. Baseball is the great American pastime. I'm just not somebody that watches the news anymore. I pretty much gave up on the news and like listening to KNX 1070, all you need to know. I don't want to know it. I want to <laughs> for me it's mm -hmm. God, my kids, my family, my friends. Playing drums with Ringo, playing drums and the Dodgers, and that and that makes me happy. And swimming, and that's it, man. I I can't really make a difference like I thought I could when it came to things. I mean, I can donate and I can do World Hunger and all that, but I'm just not going to stress about the stuff. If, if I'm 62 and I could last another, let's say, 38 years and be a hundred and keep playing the drums that's that's what i want to do man so man that's fantastic. right on that's right hey so it's the, it, things are kind of starting to sort of get back to normal i'm you know we're all working a little bit playing i just got home from some shows do you have anything lined up are you going out on tour anytime soon with any bands i know you said you did some clinics so you, do you have any tours coming up or anything like that i'm gonna go on a ringo tour next year you are you? okay yeah and every all the ticket buyers that sold out for 2020 that were postponed to 2021 have now been postponed to 2022. So we will be out on the road next year, I hope and pray. And uh, yeah, I'm playing all the time. I do a lot of sessions, uh, a lot of recording sessions. I'm doing a session with my brother uh, on Friday uh, for a Latin album that should be really super fun. Um, Christian Mayer, this uh, great Latin artist, uh, done a couple albums with him. I'm doing another thing tomorrow. Um, at a place called uh, East West, a great studio for uh, Tetsuya Moraguchi. He's an Irish guy. No, just kidding. He's <laughs> Japanese, and I've done a million Japanese albums with him over the years. So he's flying from Tokyo to produce this album, and I'm not sure who's all playing on it, but it should be pretty fun. I've gotten to do some Family Guy and American Dad sessions down at Fox, the, the big wow. box. That's like the size of a Ralph's, you know, with a hundred piece orchestra. Anyway, yeah, I'm working. And anybody that tells you, yeah, I'm working more than ever, things are great. No, nobody's yeah. working more than ever. This has, yeah. this has really been a major bummer with a capital B. But I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, I'm going to be working a lot more, touring a lot more. You do a lot of you do a lot of voiceover work too. Yes, I've, I've, the matter of fact, uh, what the P Pechanga, right? That's the one commercial no, you did. Close, close. Uh, an M. Paula. No, starts with an M. Morongo. There's so much to do at Morongo. Good there you go. I've never seen that. You there know you what? Go. Every time that commercial comes on, my wife Leah, she goes, she goes, Hey, Greg's on TV. And I hear you, Morongo <laughs> Casino. <laughs> yeah, I play a lot of voiceover stuff. Yeah. Years ago, I got I got to be doing a lot of uh, uh, stuff subbing for the guy Jim Cummings, who does Winnie the Pooh's voice, and he was subbing for the guy that passed away, Sterling Holloway, the original Winnie the Pooh voice. And I'm transcribing this Winnie the Pooh stuff with with Sterling Holloway and with Jim Cummings and getting I'm putting like musical dynamics like little staccatos and dynamics and ups and downs. And I just say, man, I used to just transcribe Vinny, but now I transcribe Vinny and Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> Still, hey, uh, Jeremy, uh, stems up or stems down on Winnie the Pooh? Always stems down. I mean, okay, okay. Always a negative guy. Oh, bother. He'd be stems down, and Winnie's the eternal optimist, so he'd be he'd be the snare drum. Stems up. Stems up. There you go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Real, let's. So how and. Uh, Let's do this. This has been an amazing, amazing hour, Greg. Thank you so much. We got we got Chris Brady on the phone. Ringo Star called. Ringo Star called. I mean, what what a fantastic podcast. Well, he didn't call because he knew I was doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. He called to say he really loved Why Hunger. Dr drum together. What a cool name for coming yeah. right. Drum together. Right? No, right. But exactly. You guys are all awesome. And Bart, I've known you for such a long time. You're one of my favorite people. Not just favorite players, but favorite people. Every time yes. I see you, 
you're what I want to be. You're you're a bright light. You know, you really oh, are. We got to be bright lights. Why well, have a lamp in a room and put a towel over it? Take the towel off. Be a bright light. Shine out there and try to make a difference just in the way drummers, just in the way you treat people in your band or at a club or at a bar oh, or at a nice. church or at a high school dance. Just try to be a light, man. That's, that's all we can do. Beautiful. Man, that's, that's right. great. And that's that's, that's right. a high compliment. Thank you so much, Greg. That's that's awesome. Greg, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for spending an hour with uh, Drummer's Education Connection. Is there anything that you want to plug that we didn't get to talk about before we go? Well, I have a CD that my brother did. It's called Warning Will Robinson. Please, if you can buy it on CD Baby or iTunes or Spotify. Uh, my brother, Matt, is my favorite bass player and favorite songwriter and dear, dear best pal. We also have a new band called The Redcoats, R-E-D-D-C-O-A-T-S, The Redcoats. And that's my brother's writing and him playing bass and singing. Andy Timmons on guitar, Wally Minko on keyboards, Mike Medina on percussion, and I'm playing drums. That's a really fun album. Right on. And, yeah, The Redcoats. Check that out if you can. And, we'll check that out. And, and probably before Christmas, Go on masterclass.com and enjoy the things that you didn't, you might have thought you knew, but you didn't know about Ringo's starting out, you know, how he started out on drums and his masterclass. Ringo started his masterclass. Cool. Fantastic. Right on. Thank you so much, Greg. Greg. It's been an honor. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate you. Yes. Greg, and one thing for sure Ringo picked the right drummer when he Heck hired you. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah, dude, well, for sure. I appreciate that so much. Nothing could be, there could be no cooler gig, man. That's just like, and he's the greatest guy too. And he's taught me so many things, not just about drumming, but he's so healthy. I mean, the way he eats and he doesn't eat sugar. He drinks like high alkaline water, watches what he eats, exercises a lot. He's got ripped abs and cut arms and he's 81 years young. So man, man I love that. He's, yeah. he's amazing. So thank you guys. Oh man, that's right. great. Well, Greg, thank you so much. Uh, this has just been a real treat and a real joy. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in. You can check it out if you didn't get to see the whole thing and you're watching the end of it now on uh, on Drummer's Education Connection YouTube. Greg, play us out. Go. Okay, I'll do uh, name that tune. Okay. Offer teacher. Offer teacher. Offer teacher. Offer teacher. Rosanna. 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 Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Come, Come together. together. Take it to ride. Take it to ride. Take five. No. Y Z. Y Z. Yep. Wipe out. Sing, 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 sing. sing. You guys are too good. <laughs> hey, you know what? You remember that drum clinic? Uh, I will end it. It was Chris Brady. It was uh, it was the L.A. Drum Show, and Chris and I helped you set up that drum set. And and you had a drum head, and you had all these names or something on it, and all these intros. And you were tuning your tom really high, and you did Copeland stuff. You did man, that guy played everything, oh, uh, or you played everything. Before. I, uh, nothing against yeah. Chris Brady or Roy Burns, but I'm a Remo guy. And nothing yeah. about a Remo ambassador coded head like being able to take a Sharpie and there you just write everything on it. Yeah. I'm sure Aquarian has a similar white head. That's yeah. <laughs> so, take the Sharpie that every drummer needs to have. You just write all your notes on your on your drum heads. You're going to change them anyway. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, change those heads a lot because – then, you, then the companies will sell more drum heads. There you go. I didn't mean to bag on sales being down. I'm just telling the truth. We have a summer NAM show. Summer NAM show in June. Yep. Things are a little different, but we will always sell drums. There will always be like a Nandy Bushell who's 11 years old who sparks people that don't have any interest in drums to play drums. Young girl drummers. There will all we we are we have to pass the torch. We have to keep people interested in playing drums. And mm -hmm. I think drum sales will start to come up again. But it's just been a little bit of a tough time. But it's coming back. It's coming back. It's been a there was there was back. a bump in the road. There was a mountain in the middle of the road. Not a bump, but we're making it over. We're we're. It wasn't a showstopper. It wasn't a showstopper, but it sure slowed them down. 
Yeah, that's for sure, man. That's for sure. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank yeah, Greg, you. thanks so much, oh. everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank Greg, you, you're the best of the best. We'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Amen.